Howdy folks. In this video, we're going to be talking about basic concepts of table derivation. Before we get into the work of actually sort of spinning some up on our own, we're just going to go over the basic concepts of them. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm here in table derivation.xlsx and I'm in the concepts tab because we're talking about concepts. So uh, we've already seen table derivations, uh, but we're going to introduce them here in a bit more of a formal way. So what is a table derivation? Well, uh, a table derivation is going to create temp tables based on the physical tables in the data model. And these temp tables become the source material for iterators and revisers. So if you want to use an iterator or revisor, um, both of those tend to require temp tables. So you're going to use the derivation to make them, to create them, to bring them into the world. Okay. So uh, there's four common derivations, and there, there are more derivations than this, but these are the four most common ones. These are the ones you should learn first because they're the most flexible and most valuable, right? Uh, and they sort of split on two axes. We have respectful and non-respectful derivations, which have to do with whether or not they pay attention to the filters that are in place in the filter context. And we have uh, all column derivations and single column distinct derivations. So uh, if, we, if we have, let's just assume over here, we've got a, a physical table, right, uh, in the data model called mini, right? And our data model just has this one physical table. And in our filter context up here, we've got one filter for shift equals lunch. If we ask for a physical table by name, for instance, mini, what we get is all the visible rows in that table. So even though there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rows in this table, because the filter context has a filter for shift equals lunch, if we just ask for the mini table, the mini table, we get the lunch rows, right? That is the, uh, the most simple derivation. Some people call it the naked table derivation because you don't even use a, a function. You just literally type out the name of the table in the data model, okay? So uh, that gets you all the columns of the table, right? So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six columns, and there's all six columns represented there, and we just get the visible ones. Okay. The next derivation we're going to look at is uh, this one right here. This is where we use the all function and point it at a physical table. So instead of just typing out the name of the physical table, we, we do that, but then we wrap that reference in the all function. And what this does is it gives us all the columns of the table, but it ignores whatever filters are currently in place. So even though there's a filter for shift equals lunch in here, if we ask for all of the mini table, we get all the rows, uh, including both lunch and dinner, right? Because this derivation uh, ignores the filter context. It is a non-respectful derivation. It does not respect the filters, but it does give us all the columns, okay? So those are those top two derivations up there. Uh, these are the two representations of the all column derivation because they give us all the columns of a table, right? The other sort of flavor of derivations is these single column distinct derivations, right? And they still produce temp tables and those temp tables are still based on the physical tables in the data model, right? But these just bring back a single column, single column. So here, right, if we use the values function, we can then point it at a single column in a physical table. So we type out the table's name and then we type out which column we want the values of. And if we do that, what we end up with is all the distinct visible values of that column. So here, uh, down here, we're pointing at the dish column in the mini table, and we want the values of it, right? And so uh, with that in mind, if we look here at the dish column, right, we could see that we have pasta, burger, pasta, burger. So all these duplicate values, we don't keep the duplicates, we just keep the distinct values. So this will return a single column temp table, right, uh, with the column dish, and it will have the two values, pasta and burger, which is the distinct values up here. Now notice in the data model, there also is a salad dish that gets served, but it doesn't get served for lunch. Because we're using the values definition, it respects this filter. This is one of our respectful derivations, and it only looks at the lunch rows. And because it's only looking at the lunch rows, we only get pasta and burger, okay? Which brings us to our last derivation. We could use the same function as before. We could use the all function, just like up here, but if instead of pointing it at just the physical table, we point it at a column within that physical table, rather than getting all of the columns, we just get all the distinct values of that one column, right? So it's very similar to this derivation right here, except this version is non-respectful, so it ignores the current filters. So uh, down here, if we do all of the dish column in the mini table, right? Even though there's a filter for shift equals lunch in the filter context, because we're using the all function, because we're using that type of derivation, right? 
uh, we get all the distinct values of dish. So rather than just looking at the lunch rows, we look at the lunch and dinner rows. We look at all the rows. And if we look at all the rows, we see we've got pasta, burger, and down here we've got salad. So this one brings back all three values, the ones that are both visible and invisible. Okay, And with those four derivations, you can do an incredible amount of stuff in DAX. There are more derivations of this, but if you learn just these, you can achieve um, lots and lots and lots of solutions. Now, uh, how do you use these things? Uh, well, on their own, they don't really do much. They need to get passed into either iterators or uh, revisers. So we've already seen examples of using them in iterators. So here I've got this basic builder pattern. Uh, I know it's a builder pattern because it's got a derivation inside of an iterator. That's what the builder pattern is, right? And here we use this values mini dish to get all the visible values of the dish column. And right now it's just pasta and burger because we're just looking at lunch, right? Then the iterator will add a column to it and sum up the results. So the iterator does this and this part. The derivations job in this little formula right here is just to produce the temp table, right? Then the iterator adds a column and sums it up. The other thing you could do with an iterator, which we haven't really seen yet, is pass it into a filter revisor, which will allow us to change the filters before executing a sub expression. So if what we want to do is execute some sub expression, go run some instructions. But before we do, we want to stop looking at lunch and we want to look at both lunch and dinner, right? We can use the calculate function to say, I want to go do this after I manipulate the filters. How do I want to manipulate the filters? Well, argument two, I use this table derivation to get all the values of the shift column. So even though we're looking at lunch based on the filter context, because I use the all derivation pointed to column, I get both lunch and dinner producing this temp table right here. And what calculate would do is it would take this temp table and stick it up here in the filter context, overriding the existing filter for shift equals lunch and replacing it with a filter for shift equals lunch and dinner. So we'd be looking at both shifts. So that uh, is, the, uh, is how you use uh, table derivations. So with that in mind, let's go look uh, at how we actually can go make these things, sort of simulate that in Excel.